Good Tesla stock news today, the Model Y just got partially refreshed and there's some talk about Twitter slash X going public. So maybe all of us will be able to invest in it. Tesla updated its Model Y at Giga Shanghai, still at the same price, and it has quite a few new features, for example, ambient lighting, new textile dashboard material, no more wood, and uh, black wheels instead of silver and this could make potentially a lot of sense maybe this is why no model y's have actually left giga texas yet and here's one more significant change the car can now go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.9 seconds instead of 6.9 seconds there are no ventilated seats in the car though and the logo remains as a T instead of the word Tesla being spelled out. The interior uses the same 256 color ambient lighting and cotton accents as the Model 3. Additionally, and this is the important part, Tesla China tells me that the car uses greener glue and more acoustic cotton to improve the noise, vibration, and harshness of the entire vehicle. I haven't seen anyone say that there's a new suspension, but also I haven't seen anyone clearly state that the suspension is not updated. How do you like this new ambient lighting? Uh, I do like that it's not all the way over here. But the only reason I say that is because I saw someone complain that uh, this ambient lighting reflects in the window when you're driving in some certain situations. I haven't obviously tried the car myself, so I can't say. But if that is a problem, then this is not exactly great. I assume Tesla mostly considered that and made sure it's not a natural problem. But I do like how the lights go all the way to here as opposed to just until here. Yeah, I think the Model 3 ambient lighting is a bit better. It's just that I think in the Model Y, guaranteed you will not have any reflections in the windows when driving. Sawyer says this isn't a big enough change to call it a refresh, it's just a small update and he is not expecting a major refresh of the Model Y until late 2024 at the earliest. I think Sawyer probably said it before he saw the updated 0 to 60 speed as well as reduced noise, vibration, and harshness. James doesn't think this is the Juniper Model Y, which would be a fully updated Model Y, and I agree with that. If you are planning to buy a Model Y in the next few months, this also sends a very strong signal to the buyers that if you want to buy now, well, either buy now or wait for another year until the refresh, the full refresh, actually comes. I think some buyers were hoping that the Model Y would get a full refresh just like the Model 3 just did and therefore they delay their Model Y purchase. Now there's less reason to delay your purchase unless you are willing to wait for a whole year. Chris says here that this Model Y has hardware 4.0 and then he also says that noise, vibration, and harshness reduction kits are also included in this car. I'm not sure exactly what that means. So maybe probably no new suspension, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a new suspension in the Model Y in the next few months. What is also quite interesting is that the speed of the rear wheel drive Model Y in China is 5.9 seconds, but the Model 3 is 6.1 seconds, making it a bit slower. I think that's one way that Tesla is going to push some customers to the Model Y. And here's a comparison of the two Model Ys, one with the black wheels from Giga Shanghai. Which one do you like more? I think the one with the black wheels looks maybe just a bit more fresh, maybe a bit cooler. I personally like the black wheels better and that seems to be the clear consensus when I scroll through the comments. And here's what the black wheels look like with other colors. Roland put together another interesting chart. You can see actual deliveries in this color. And for example, in green, you can see Troy's predictions. And then, for example, in red, you can see Bloomberg consensus, and the one in blue is the Tesla compiled consensus. And then you can see what the stock actually did and how the market was that day. A few more estimates I haven't mentioned yet. James Stevenson is at 435,000. Rob Mauer from Tesla Daily is at almost 445,000. And then Brian from My Tesla Weekend is at 451,400. The last time. Brian was spot on, well, I mean, compared to other people. His estimate was better than Troy's. The interesting thing is every single estimate is below 
the company compiled consensus. France just reported its deliveries and it's 5,500, which is actually slightly above Troy's expectations, which is good. And you can clearly see that the delivery wave is being phased out. And Tesla sales in France so far this year are already way better than the sales of the last year. Portugal also just reported its sales. And what's very clear is that if the Model 3, the refresh Model 3 was available to be delivered in September, then we would have definitely had a record quarter in Europe. We just ran out of Model 3s. Tesla just made it a little bit more expensive to finance vehicles in the US. I played some highlights from this video before, but because the video was very long, I didn't specifically mention that uh, this was designed in China, which is interesting uh, to highlight, which also delivers on Elon's promise to have a design studio in China that would develop uh, new vehicles. This could potentially also help Tesla boost its sales in China because if, uh, if it's a Tesla China design vehicle, as a Chinese consumer, I think you're a bit more interested in the vehicle. Tesla is now delivering cars with FSD installed. There is no update required for you to turn on FSD. And before you often had to wait for several weeks for the new update to even arrive. So this is good news because I think some people were frustrated waiting for FSD before. I was certainly a bit annoyed when I saw all of these other people driving with FSD beta and I wasn't. Possibly some good news for Tesla's full cell driving beta in China. Chris says, I saw this in my WeChat group, the autopilot settings directory uh, for this model free shows that this car has full cell driving beta and there's an on and off button, but it somewhat looks fishy, he says. So maybe it's a fake screenshot. However, Chris found another screenshot that shows that this model three also has uh, full self driving beta and you can turn it off or on. But there's some skepticism about this screenshot as well. Maybe it's just photoshopped. We will probably be able to confirm it very clearly in the next coming week. Remember this absolutely massive service and delivery center that uh, was going to be built in Canada. The city council approved the proposed land use change this week, giving Tesla the green light to build this massive 6,000 square meter service center. I grew up in Europe, so I still sometimes think in square meters. Here's another Cybertruck site. I think in just a moment, you'll see the rear wheel steering right here yeah i think that feature is going to be pretty useful because it's a pretty big car it's officially q4 october 1st which means cybertruck deliveries begin this quarter the pickup truck industry is about to change forever i agree and omar says as a matter of fact the first one will be sold to a customer within the next week but i assume that he's talking about that auction so i'm not really quite sure if that really counts technically he does but practically uh, I'm not sure. Tesla and EV fires are posted all the time, so maybe we should post more of these gas-powered vehicle fires. Elon Musk became CEO of Tesla 15 years ago this month. I wonder if clips like this go into FSD training data. That's some seriously bad luck right there. This Tesla bear or fly says that the brake lights were wired to the accelerator and the driver pushed the accelerator Clearly, well, I strongly disagree because if you look at the car right now, the lights are on and yet the car is not moving. The car just stops and doesn't move with the brake lights on. I haven't double checked this, but if this is true, this is a pretty good safety feature. Brake lights come on when the car sees an obstacle in the way. This is done so the cars behind the Tesla have time to brake. The car will normally brake in order to avoid the crash, but if the driver presses the accelerator, the car will accelerate, but the brake light will be on. If anyone can verify that, please leave a comment down below. This clip is going viral and it's basically an advertisement for EVs. Take a look. Robbery. And trying to get some of this gas back. Wow. Hey, you think if I go in there and tell them that I put the wrong gas in here, they'll give me a refund? Huh? 
This is crazy. I'm going electric. SpaceX Starlink is poised to receive India satellite internet provider license in October. I think this is also good for Tesla somewhat because it shows that SpaceX is welcome and so I think will Tesla be? So Bill Ackman is considering taking Twitter now X back to being a public company. Billionaire investor and X slash Twitter fanatic Bill Ackman is eyeing the platform as a possible target for his new investment vehicle. Says he would absolutely consider a deal to take Elon Musk's company public again. I really think that X could eventually be bigger than Facebook, which would make the valuation of X eventually close to $1 trillion. So investing in X is something that would be of high interest to me. There's an estimate here that YouTube is worth close to $200 billion. And I think Twitter slash X can seriously compete with YouTube in the long term. Currently, the features on X are seriously lacking. For example, you can't really see how long people watch your videos for. I mean, you sort of can, but it's not as useful as what you see on YouTube. And if X eventually can make it so, the creators on X make more money than on YouTube, inevitably, in the long term, more and better content will be on X, which will then bring more users to X and will take a lot of viewers away from YouTube. We know that Elon knows how to cut costs and how to save money. So I think in the long term, that's pretty much almost inevitable. That is if Elon decides to seriously compete with YouTube as well. I don't think YouTube will go away, but it just may not be as big as it is right now. Another big problem currently on X is, um, I saw some people post their longer form videos on X and then they stopped doing it. One reason is because people are just not used to watching longer videos on there and it's also the experience is just not as good. For example, if I ever see a video on X and if it's a longer video and if that video is also available on YouTube, I always go to YouTube to watch that video. For now, I find the video quality to be higher, like the actual picture quality is higher, it's less buggy. Twitter or slash X sometimes crashes on me or it just restarts my video from the beginning and then where was I watching the video and if it's available on YouTube then I will go to YouTube right after that crash and that happened many times to me already. But all of these things will be fixed in the long term, it's just a matter of time. George Hotz temporarily worked at Twitter slash X after the takeover and he says that all of the code may need to be rewritten basically completely from scratch and that is one reason why it's difficult to add new features right now because you make one change and then many things just break. So eventually I will start very actively posting on X2. I'm just not sure exactly uh, when. I've also seen many anecdotal stories of the same video, let's say on YouTube, um, let's say it's a 10 minute video and that video on YouTube would have a watch time, average watch time of let's say five to six minutes, but on Twitter slash X, it only has an average watch time of let's say 20 seconds. One reason is because people are just not used to seeing videos on there. So they need to do something about it. And over time that will change. So I see a lot of potential in X. And to a large degree, it's just a technical problem. And there's no better person than Elon Musk to solve a technical problem. Former US president just made a few comments about EVs. California has imposed the most ridiculous car regulations anywhere in the world with mandates to move to all electric cars. The problem with an electric car, number one, you lose all your jobs because they're all going to be made in China and other countries. They're not going to be made here at all. I was up in uh, the other day in Michigan, like the other night, we had an incredible crowd. And they were the United Auto Workers, auto workers and, and others, but we were sort of focused on the auto workers. I said, you got to endorse Trump because I'm going to save your industry. We're going to have a thriving car industry. <laughs> this lunatic is going to destroy. He's going to go all electric. Think about all electric. And I have no problem with electric. You should be able to buy an electric car. You should buy a gas-fired uh, car. You should buy a hybrid. You should buy whatever the hell you want. I mean, some people like electric. If you want to drive for 14 minutes to the candy store, it, electric is very good. But if you actually want to get into a car and drive for a few hours, you know, they're doing a couple of other ones with electric. They're going electric crazy. Uh, 
It doesn't work. I think Steven has a pretty good point here. Don't want to rain on anyone's parade here, but nothing anyone, including Orange Man Bad, says or does, including policy about EVs, will impact the transition to EVs. It is commercially inevitable. Nothing will stop the transition or its pace. Now, I think the pace could be slowed down, but it won't be stopped. It will still be pretty fast. For example, you could slow down the transition by taking away the $7,500 EV tax credit in the US, but... Stevens continues and says, supply of compelling EVs is the limiting factor. I agree. Prices will trend down as features, performance, safety all trend up. For sure. A few years from now, consumers will actually need to be dim to choose ICE over EV. Relax. Politicians can slow down the transition, but they can stop it. Also, it would help, I think, a lot if Elon made it super clear in every single interview and on X regularly that Teslas are the most American-made cars. I think that would make it a bit more difficult for any politician to attack Tesla directly. Some indirect attacks would still continue, for example, attacks on EVs and not necessarily on Tesla, but it would still help Tesla a little bit, I think. And this is a fact that I think pretty much almost no one really knows. Unless you are a Tesla stock investor, you don't know about this. This is a Nissan EV deep water test. And listen to this reaction of these two seeing the Saba truck. I think this is a pretty common reaction. Take a listen. Tiny. So, mom, look, do you see do you it? Do you see it? Look, it's right there. Oh my god, no. I'm Dude! <laughs> Everyone's That's looking at it. Oh my god, we're in the car. We're in the, the Tesla truck car. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. now he's going on the highway. Okay. That's pretty much as good as advertising, right? Some more good news, a Travis County School District is planning to purchase a fleet of Teslas for its newly formed police force. They plan on buying nine Teslas. But listen to his reasoning here. We evaluated those bids according to a very specific criteria and we followed the legal procurement process exactly. There were only two qualifying offers that were submitted. And in evaluating those, Tesla was determined to be the best value for Ains ISD taxpayers. And we can get those vehicles in 60 days. Other traditional makes and models of police vehicles we knew were probably going to take us at least a year to be able to provide to our officers in our new department. And not only that, but the other more conventional police vehicles that might be available to us even after 12 or more months were going to be considerably more expensive than the Tesla models that are proposed to us. And that's why we're recommending the Tesla as the best value and the most cost-effective option for Ains ISD taxpayers and our new police department. Well, that's bullish, cheaper and faster. Elon is spending some time playing computer games. I haven't played any computer games now in a few years. Civilization is the last game I played and it's a turn-based strategy game where you need to think a little bit. I like uh, these games that make you think. And Barclays Auto Analyst had a few thoughts about the ongoing strikes and how that affects Tesla. They certainly won't agree to the full demands. Key question in our mind is around product allocation, job security. The automakers are seeking greater flexibility. UAW is seeking greater uh, job security. Finally, how are GM and Ford going to compete? They already have a $65 an hour labor cost where Tesla's is 45 to 50. I, will they be successful in bringing Teslas up? Because otherwise, their cost is about to go even higher. We think their cost will increase. This is naturally going to happen, not only across Tesla, but probably across the transplant OEMs. Um, you know, I think this is naturally the case. Can they unionize? You know, we've noted in the past it's been a, a, it's been a, a tougher effort by the UAW, but uh, and that in part has been because Tesla has benefited from paying its employees with stock comp, with the stock now where it is, that may not be the same types of benefits in the future. So wages are going to go up at Tesla. I think for them, though, you know, and this is the case for, for all of the automakers, it's a constant battle on all aspects of cost 
to offset these different these different inflationary pressures. Overall, I think the strikes benefit Tesla. I would also like to thank all of my new Patreon supporters. By joining my Patreon, you will get access to how much I think it is fair to pay per Tesla share each year between 2020 free in 2033. If you sign up for the investor tier of support, you will also get my valuation model of Tesla stock with a 45 minute video walkthrough. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching that discussion about the future where Elon Musk participates, watch this one first. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Fosius.